All right, it's time for me to assemble the base of this deer stand. Um, I'm working with two by sixes here and they're treated. I did put some stain on them. Um, I used some old uh, dark walnut stain and I had it left over from some other projects. I had two cans. Uh, one can still had viable stain in, but I thought I'd show you this. This is kind of kind of different. I guess I never had a can of stain uh, sit around that long. But you notice the can is half full. Well, you tip her over, nothing runs out. The stain kind of turned into rubber. And that's primarily why I'm uh, using stain instead of paint on here is because I had this leftover stain. And I figured instead of letting the other can turn into rubber, uh, I'd use it up on these treated 2x6s for the base. Some three quarter inch plywood installed on top of the base. All right, I bought these elevator brackets to build the hunting stand, and I'll unbox them and we'll see what we all got in the box here. All right, this is what was in the box basically, your four elevator brackets, and then a set of instructions. Uh, no hardware comes with, with this kit. But uh, the hardware is simple enough to attach these to the base. Basically, I just need 36 5 16 2 inch leg screws. So uh, I'm going to go mount these to the base and then uh, we'll go from there. All right, for the install, it really couldn't be easier. They want you to go an inch and a half from the end, but that's basically the thickness of my 2x6 here. So all I have to do is slide it all the way down. Then I can stick the two inch leg screw. It doesn't say anything about using washers, but I like washers, so I'm gonna stick a washer on there. They want you to pre-drill the holes. I only pre-drilled two of them. I figure I'll drill the other ones after I get these first two screws in. Just so I don't uh, drill them way off or anything. Woo! All right, slap these in there. She's bolted on. Now I'll do the the other three, and then I'll get this part ready for uh, transport. Because I won't put the posts in here until we're at the stand location. I have the basic frame of the deer stand built. Um, I temporarily screwed it together and I'm going to put the siding on and then I'm going to take it apart after the siding's on because that should hold the frame square and then make it easier for me to reassemble it when I get it up north. I just thought I'd take a little section video of what it looks like before I get the siding on it.
right I figured I'd take a second to talk about the window construction because I know it's the windows are probably one of the harder parts on the blind to figure out and I am no expert in any way shape or form but this looked like about the easiest way for an amateur like me to build it um, basic two by fours didn't trim nothing off of them um, using pocket hole screws to hold them together um, I cut slots in about a half inch deep two blade I run it through it's the thickness about of about the blade twice so twice the blade thickness on the table saw so these slide in and out real easy um, after I screw the top on I my intention is then to run a bead of brown silicone around the outside to kind of seal it up after the woods all painted and everything like that so I can kind of hopefully make it last a little longer um, I am gonna put plugs in where the pocket hole uh, holes are basically but uh, there I think that's about as simple as a window as a guy can design and I'll show you later how you how I decided to, to hang them and hinge them and how they how they're gonna operate in this blind all right the at-home mock-up of this hunting shack is almost completed still got a little more details to do there's the roof but uh i'm ready to take it apart and get it ready to haul up north because pretty much everything else i should be able to do up there without uh too much of an issue all right i have the hunting blind in its uh final location here um, we got it reassembled. I did shingle the roof uh, Only because we got a fantastic deal at Home Depot. They had some discontinued shingles that uh, They were only seven bucks a bundle. So how could I pass that up? Um, we got it camouflaged <laughs> Custom camouflage um, I don't have the windows in or Anything like that because I don't want to risk breaking them when I pivot this thing into the air, which I still don't have a 100% idea on what the best way to do that is. Quick view of our $7 a bundle shingles. It uh, took one bundle plus four shingles to do this roof. All right, we got the stand up in the air. Uh, basically, it's 10 feet up in the air. Um, we have it anchored to the ground. Let's start with that. Uh, the paint's still a little wet, but uh, basically I pounded in some fence posts and then I put two screws in each one and I did that to each leg. Okay, so that's kind of how I anchored it. Here's another one. And then, uh, and then there of course is the fourth one over here. And then on the two kitty corner legs, on this one, I got it buried under the clay there, but uh, I had uh, two of the screw-in ground anchors, and I put one on that leg and one on that leg. And then this clay, uh, it's still a little too hard for me to work or too clumpy, but uh, I was going to wait, and after a good rain, I was going to stomp it and shape it so the water just kinds of run, kind of runs away from the legs. I don't know if that helps, hurts. I don't know, but it makes me feel good, so I did it. <laughs> then let's see, what do we got here? Uh, the last anchor I did, I had an old uh, ratchet strap that didn't uh, didn't really work very good anymore. It was in, in an old junk vehicle we had. It was sitting in the back, but uh, I beat on it, got it to work a little bit, and I put an eye hook in the stand and an eye hook in the tree. And I just ratcheted, ratcheted it tight. I don't think you'll ever get that thing off without cutting it though, because cutting it or a lot of beating and swearing on it. Ah, these cross braces here, those are 12 foot two by fours with just a little piece of a four by four block in there. Nothing special. Um, and those aren't treated. The legs are treated uh, four by fours and they're just stained 
Um, so let's see, that about covers it for the base. I got the elevator brackets, obviously. And those work good, nice and easy. Um, if you, you look up there, you can see the windows. The things are a little crooked on, on the side windows, but I made an error there. I bought uh, non-glare plexiglass, or Lexon, whatever it was, and uh, you can't see through that stuff. I didn't know that. <laughs> Live and learn, I guess. So I just temporarily put them on there to keep the weather out, but eventually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna screw them things on straight, the little uh, garage door seal flaps, and I'm gonna run a bead of silicone, and I'm gonna put the, when I get the clear ones, I'm gonna put the clear plexi plexiglass or Lexon, whatever, on, on there, and then I'll screw the garage door seal on there to, to seal her up. Um, I ended up running a bead of silicone along the roof because of the way I made it there was a, a little bit of a gap because I made the roof at an angle so when I made it the other 2x4 to it it was kind of on an angle so it had a little gap but I just put uh, brown silicone in there um, around the windows like the main center window that's just uh, that garage door uh, seal so when you shut the window, it uh, hopefully should keep the weather out. Um, let's see, is there anything else to talk about from down here? Nothing really too exciting. Um, I didn't, uh, I don't have any video of us putting it up because it was an absolute circus. <laughs> I've never, uh, never put one up before. And my thought was, I was going to put it, my forks on my tractor lift eight feet high. So I thought, I had the 10 foot post, I thought I could tilt the forks back, stick the back posts in. And then we brought the little mini dump truck over. And we were just going to tilt it back, pulling with that, and then slide these other legs in. And I thought that would go easy as pie. But uh, we got the other truck over here. The first two legs in went in great. Using the forks, just tilt, tilt the back. I put the legs in, jammed some screws in there to hold them in. And then when we tried pulling with uh, the little dump truck, one of the brake lines blew, so the brake pedal went to the floor. Then I wasn't confident I was going to be able to stop the thing. And then I was like, well, I'll tilt the forks and back up. Because with it anchored to the truck that was on the other side, in theory, I should be able to, to jack it up. You know, with the angle of the forks, get the height I needed to get these legs in. Well, that was an absolute ordeal. It kept wanting to pull the thing forward and it was tipping. And... We had some video of it, but uh, it was such a circus show. I think you'd actually be stupider if you start. If I showed any of them clips, it'd be a detriment to you because it would actually make you stupider. Because it was it was a complete circus. But uh, in hindsight, if I was to do this again with the tractor I have, if I just used eight foot legs instead of ten foot legs, it would have went easy. In a half hour, I would have been done. And I should have actually just cut two feet off of these legs instead of fighting with it, teetering, pulled up against the truck and hooked onto the tractor. But what's done is done and it's up in the air and uh... all right, I'll start with the door here. I know I got the angles going the wrong way there. Uh, the angles are supposed to go back to the hinges but I had intended to hinge the door on the other side, but there's a big tree in the way from where we got it set up, so I was not able to do that. So yes, I know I got the angled braces in the door angled the wrong way, but uh, that's life, I think it'll hold up. I'm not building a beer cooler here, it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, let's see here, you notice it's not painted. Ah. Uh, 
That's because I bought one gallon of barn paint at uh, Fleet Farm and one gallon of paint on this 5x6 building only gets you the outside painted. Alright. Yeah, the sun's kind of shining. It's early yet and the sun is pretty much just coming up. I'll get you up in here. I'll show you these windows. Alright, they're a little fogged up right now. Alright. Now, let's see. We got the hinges. They're a little oversized, uh, but it's what I had left over from a different project. If you hear whining, it's my dog. He's mad. He can't come up the ladder. <laughs> but okay, back to the hinges. I had a contractor pack. So I just used those instead of going out and uh, getting a bunch of new ones. And then we got just this cheap little barrel latch down here to hold her shut. So you flip that open. Yeah, it's kind of noisy. And, uh, but I, my thought is, if I'm in here, or whoever's in here, they would open the, open the window right away, and it'd probably just stay open. And then I got a little magnet up on the wall. Boom. Locked in. Alright. So, uh, back to the paint, though. Guy definitely wants, I'm definitely going to buy another gallon, so I can paint the interior here. Otherwise, I'd stick out like a sore thumb through the windows. You know, the deer would be able to pick me out. Alright, here's the garage door trim I was talking about. That kind of seals up against the window. On the top and the sides, it's out flush with the plywood siding. Show you that. So it ended up flush. And on the bottom, it's set back uh, just to the edge of the plywood siding. And that, that gave about the best seal. And if you notice my sill, it's at an angle. I don't know if it shows very good. But uh, I cut this at an angle. So any water that got in could run down the sill. Alright, and then let's see my windows that you can't see through. The little uh, no glare uh, plexiglass that you can't see through. When I get the clear window... My thought is run the bead of silicone around the opening and then clamp it down with that garage door sill or seal again. And I think that'll work pretty good for keeping that sealed up. Um, again, why I put uh, non-opening windows there? I knew I had a tree right there on that corner. And then open the middle window here. Got to, again, do the barrel latch. Then I got the little magnet. Roll her up. And again, I'm going to be redoing this silicone. Uh, just because I didn't anticipate the window sliding up and down and messing it up on me. We got the garage door seal here again. Same angle. And if you look out, little windows. And again, there's a tree there. Tree there, kind of blocking the view. That's why I didn't have the opening windows on the side there okay and the last window here yeah condensation all over the window but uh, you're gonna get that so latch her up and that's good and good and done and here's a view out that window I kinda had it my seal kinda pinched in there I can see but I'm thinking over time That'll kind of take the shape shape a little better, and I think that'll become less and less of a problem. Um, if I was going to set this blind up in the middle of a field, I would have ran the windows. My dog's still whining somewhere down there. <clears throat> ran the windows all the way to the edge, so I had the entire area open. And then, uh, let's see, what else? What other changes? Oh, my daughter's idea, actually... She wants to have a shooting rest that folds up and can fold back down. So I got to design that. You know, so she has a little table she can rest on as she looks out the window. I'm going to add a shelf up above there to keep like a first aid kit, a little hatchet so you can break that pesky bone in the back when you're cleaning them out. Um, and drink holders. Can't have a hunting blind without drink holders, so there'll be drink holders in here somewhere. And obviously, I got to make the stairs <clears throat> to go from here to down there. 
you know, and I'd like to make it so it's uh, not like a crazy angle or crazy step. I'd like it to be somewhat reasonable, but I can't really say too much about it because I don't even really have a plan in my mind yet when I get home. I don't even really have to take measurements. I know I'm 10 feet up, so I just basically got to play with angles and build a ladder or stairs that go 10 feet up. Um, what else can I talk about in here? Um, I know if you're looking out the window, you're seeing them turnips, you're probably like, wow, this idiot planted them way too close together. Well, I've been lucky planting them close together like that, so I keep doing it. I don't know. And I guess it, it depends. I've tried it where I did the real light spreading in different spots, and I got bigger bulbs, but the deer just seemed to tear this one down but I do come through and probably uh, Labor Day weekend I'll come through and I'll spread some urea on top of this and man that's like it just makes makes the turnips like triple in size the leaves shoot up and the bulbs start growing big so yes I know that uh, this turnip patch is overseeded but uh, <laughs> I do it on purpose here because it's been working because I've I've got a, another turnip patch on the other end that's probably seeded at about half the rate as this and yes I definitely do get bigger bulbs but uh, seems like the deer like to come tear this one up first I don't know if it's location or if it's the way it's planted but anyhow you got uh, you can see it's tilled there uh, Labor Day weekend I'll be spreading some winter rye in there so you, hopefully around October, when it's time for bow hunting, there'll be some nice tender shoots they can come and chew on as they walk up the path, come into the stand. Okay, then you look, that's the view out that window. Can't really see too much. And out the back, again, this is why I had to change. That's the tree that made me change the orientation of my door. And I did frame this so I could put a window in, but... Uh, with the fact that I can't really see much back through there, I'm not going to put a window in there. Oh, dog's waiting patiently. <laughs> um, what else could I say? Um, uh, for this for this stand, I do have a backup. You know, I, I used to have a ladder stand here, and if if you spook the deer on this stand. Or you spooked them one night. It seemed like after that they'd make a big circle before they would come in. The does would still come running in. But the bucks would always seem to do a big circle around the stand before they would come in. So how we we kind of counter that. I got the ladder stand now about 100 yards in. Before we'd use a climbing tree stand. And there's a big trail going through the woods in there. And when they're making their circle... Like if you if you got snorted at the night before, the next night you go sit in that stand and you're almost uh, guaranteed to to get one. You're almost guaranteed because they they'd always do a, kind of a big circle around this spot. So after this video, I'll do a close up of my chicken scratchings that I call plans. That way, if uh, you're making something similar, you could at least have a rough idea of how much wood you'd need. Um, basically, I think this is about the simplest of a stand you can make. I can't, couldn't really think of a, a simpler way to, to make one. Uh, the roof is, I don't know if I went over the roof, roof is pretty simple here. Basically, I just had the uh, 16 on center 2x4s. And I cut a little 2x4, screwed it in between, uh, so they're all in line on the front and the back. And then I uh, dragged and set the roof on top of here, and I rammed some screws in, sucked her down. And like I showed from the outside, I put a little silicone around the outside. And I think this roof is uh, will hold up great. I don't know if I can hold my arm up and get the shingles. I don't know if that come in, but uh, here's how the back of the roof looks. 
And I do need to get a little more silicone, but like I, I run out of silicone, so. But I'll get her. I just uh, run a little short on supplies. <laughs> Gonna get that every now and then. But all right, I'm done rambling. Here's here's the plans. All right, this is a basic quick list of the lumber I used. Um, I did have lumber left over, but I also used scraps that I had laying around also. So, uh, but this, this list here will pretty much build you exactly the same stand that I built. Okay, so my chicken scratching. All right, so you got the side here. We'll look at the side first. Okay, I didn't write down the, the measurement of the top board, but basically the angle of the roof is 11.3 degrees. So this being the side, all the boards on top were cut at 11.3 degrees to mate with that top board. Okay, the front board was 80 and 7 8 inches long. The bottom plate was 53 inches long. Uh, the second board here was uh, 78 and 3 eighths, uh, 70 and 13 sixteenths, and then a 69 incher. And then under the window, I used a 29 incher. Uh, the window was 30 and a half wide, so those two boards were 30 and a half. And the uh, support board dead center going on the window was 22 and 3 eighths. Now the window I actually built a half inch smaller than the opening just to ensure it it opened smooth and I wasn't sure how much this thing was going to flex. So the window is 30 by 19 and a half inch on the side. Okay so like the spacing uh, the first 2 by 4 is 12 and a half in and then after that I went 16 on center. And then ended up at the, the one that was at the end of the 53 inches. Um, other notables, like when I put the plywood on this, I overhung the plywood three and a half inches on the side and then four inches on the bottom. So that's a rundown, you know, and obviously two sides. Okay, we don't want to do the roof yet. Let's do, uh, let's do the front of this thing. Okay, so now the front, uh, the two, the boards like on the sides, they're 81 and a half long, but again, because it's the front, I made it, it to uh, match the angle on the sides, so I cut these boards, like if you turn them sideways, at 11, roughly 11.3 degrees. So they had a slope downhill, so they match the boards on the sides. So, and then, basically I'll go over the measurements. You needed uh, four of them that were 81 and a half, two that were 29 to put the window at the same height. This window I w made 38 and a half inches, uh, or the sill, I made 38 and a half long. And again, I mentioned it in a video, I cut the sill on the table saw so it was angled outward on the bottom plate just that way, uh, any rain that got in it could run out. And the window I made a half inch smaller than the opening again. So this window was 38 by 19 and a half. And in my building, I didn't, uh, I didn't write down what them top measurements were for the two top boards. Uh, on the bottom, I went uh, 16 on center. For my boards, but uh, the third one in, if you want your sheet of plywood to line up, if you did it the way I did it, you got to go 47 and a half. Why you got to go 47 and a half? Because I over I took the plywood and I made it overhang a half inch on the sides, so it would cover the plywood overhang from the sides. So I thought. I am no building expert, but I thought that was uh, a good way to do it. And then uh, on the bottoms, 
Even on the sides, I don't remember if I mentioned that, but on the bottom, I made the plywood overhang four inches. Uh, just to overhang the base a little bit. And, uh, and to keep it, uh, just to keep it dry and make it easier for assembly, you know, because then one person, when you got that overhang, you can just set it on the base, flip it up, and it kind of stands there by itself and slap some screws in there. All right, and the back, uh, again, I, I framed for a window, but I didn't put a window in. But uh, the back was 68 and 5 eighths, and these measurements, again, this is angled 11.3 at the top, so sloping down, and all the measurements are to the longest part of the board. So when I cut to 11.3 degrees, the 68 and 5 eighths is to the longest part of the board. Uh, the top plate is uh, 72 uh, inches long. Um, this bottom one, I actually had a 72 incher in there, but after I got it in, I cut out underneath where the door is. So basically you'd only need a 33 incher because you don't need this part. I left it attached because I had to haul it and it just made it so much easier to work with with it being solid with that board in there. And then again, underneath uh, where the window would have been, but I didn't put one, a 29 incher, and then it would have been a 16 and a half incher right there. And now the door, uh, on the inside of the full length 68 and 5 eighths stud, I did uh, 64 and a half inch boards just to support the little header I made and I put them under that little header which I just used two by fours and there I used two of them I doubled them up and I put a piece of half inch plywood in the middle of them and that uh, little header is 39 inches and that made me for a 36 inch door opening which I thought because uh, I'm not getting any skinnier I thought uh, that'd be plenty wide enough and on this, I overhung the plywood a half inch on the sides and four inches on the bottom. All right, the last piece of the puzzle is the roof. Basically, it consisted of six two by fours. They were 74 and three quarter inches long. They were cut at 11 degrees, base, well, 11.3 degrees on the front and the back. That way they appeared... Uh, they, they're vertical when they're sitting on the slanted sides. Um, the, I put them at 16 on center. And basically, they're all 16 on center except for the last one, which I believe was 8 and a quarter on center. That's what I had wrote down, but uh, I'm not 100% sure on that. So I'd, I'd have to double check that if a guy was building it. But basically, I put them, there's no inboard, even though I got a line there. There's no end board. These boards, these 14 and a half inch boards, uh, they were screwed on, I think roughly six inches in. So basically they would line up with the top plates on the front wall and the back wall. And that way it sealed it off. I did have to add a little silicone to, to make it perfect, but uh, that kind of sealed it off. And with these being spaced about six inches from each end, and when I had it on there, it looked best. I slid it around until I thought it looked best. And that ended up with the results of a five and a half inch overhang on the front and a six and three quarter inch rear overhang on the, on the back of the building. Um, in closing, I am absolutely no... Uh, construction expert and I'm definitely not an expert on blinds but uh, this is probably the simplest design I could come up with and it uh, seems like it's gonna work pretty good but time will tell so I guess thanks for watching the video